Rolled it as he did. Then it sets up the screen to Henry. Cuts inside. No matter what you do, you can't escape the grasp of father time. Whether it's due to their age or some other off-the-field issues, there's a few number of players out there who aren't looking quite as hot as they used to. Establishing yourself as a top guy at your position in the NFL is no easy task. There is staunch competition from thousands of elite athletes, all of whom are highly incentivized to try and outperform you. And you know what? Even once you are at the top, sometimes staying there is even harder. In fact, some guys fall straight off a cliff, so much so that they go from bona fide star to out of the league seemingly overnight. And heading into the 2023 season, there are more than a few stars ripe for a good falling off. So let's take a glance ahead and predict 10 NFL stars who absolutely need to have a big season to maintain their status and potentially save their career. Right, they got a lot of experience back there, you know, and also has some youth, you know, and play with physicality. You know, I think it's a bigger secondary. You know. Starting off in the nation's capital with Washington Commanders quarterback Carson Wentz. Well, we started starting in D.C., you know, at least for the moment. But it seems like a very real possibility that the Commanders are going to cut ties with the former second overall pick because his 2022 season was just that much of a disaster. When a team sends draft capital off for a veteran quarterback, you're doing so because you're expecting a somewhat reliable, proven commodity. However, during year one in Washington, Wentz was anything but that. He made just seven starts, partially due to injury and partially due to lack of performance. And during those games, the team was just two and five. Meanwhile, they went six, three and one without him. The suits noticed too. Check out what Martin Mayhew, the team's general manager, had to say when asked about Wentz's future with the team. We're currently working through all that and having discussions. We're still in that kind of season review process. Over the next few days, we'll be talking about all those things and trying to sort that out. Yeah, far from a ringing endorsement. At this point, Wentz has essentially hit rock bottom. He flamed out of Philly, essentially regressing more and more each of his last couple of seasons there before a mediocre season in Indy and this horrendous stint with the Commanders. If, and that is a big if, Wentz can find a chance to start in 2023, which may be dependent on an injury around the league, he, point blank, needs to have a good season. He needs to at least show something. Otherwise, he may very well be on his way out of the league. Wentz isn't the only high-profile quarterback that has found himself in the deep end of the NFL pool. There are three other vets, Ryan Tannehill, Matt Ryan, and Matt Stafford, who are all sorely in need of big-time seasons in 2023 if they want to continue their careers. Starting off with the former, Tannehill, after a brief career renaissance in Tennessee, largely thanks to guys like Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown, seems to have come back down to earth. The Titans were about as mediocre as you can be this season, and much of that was because of the obvious limitations that Tannehill has at the quarterback position. He simply is never going to be the guy that wins you a game. At best, he won't lose it for you, and now it's starting to look like that's the best case scenario when he is under center. Tannehill is entering his age 35 season, and with the Titans seemingly done with him, 2023 will very likely be a make or break year for Tannehill, you know, if he wants to keep playing in the NFL. He needs to make sure he lands with a contender, first and foremost. We're talking a team that is just missing general competence at the position, like, say, the New York Jets, for example. And more importantly, he has to find a way to deliver. Otherwise, it's going to be curtains for Ryan Tannehill. As far as Matt Ryan is concerned, well, 2022 went about as poorly as it possibly could have. He was brought into Indy as the missing piece, and he ended up losing his job two separate times during the season, under the direction of two different head coaches. A hilarious testament to how chaotic and, well, terrible Matt Ryan and the rest of the Colts' 2022 season was. On the field, he looked even worse than Tannehill did. The offense looked completely inept with him under center, and he put up his worst statistical season of his career. The the Colts were 4-7-1 and one during his starts, and he threw just 14 touchdowns to 13 interceptions, and was helplessly immobile, taking an insane 38 sacks in just 11 games. That was the seventh highest total in the league last year, and none of the guys ahead of him played less than 15 games. I can only imagine what it would have looked like if Ryan had played a full season. The crazy part about it is, if you actually watched him on the field, it actually looked worse than the numbers. At this point, his future in the league is undoubtedly murky. And it'll really take a special performance from him in 2023 if he wants to keep his career going. Stafford, on the other hand, well, it's kind of crazy to think that we're still just one year removed from him having led the Rams to a Super 
world title, but it is entirely possible that he did so pretty much on his last legs. He is now 35, and after an entire career of playing through injuries, it seems like they may have finally gotten the best of him, as he missed the bulk of a horrendous 2022 season for the Rams, in which they didn't even come close to defending their crown. And it isn't like he was lighting the world on fire during the nine games that he played. Before he got hurt, he threw for just 2,087 yards and 10 touchdowns to eight interceptions, leading the Rams to a measly 3-6 record. While he is technically under contract through the 2026 season, which frankly was an insane decision the Rams made in a fever pitch of Super Bowl winning bliss, I wouldn't be shocked to see LA try and find a way to buy out the remaining years of his deal if this season is a repeat of last. Something I don't think Stafford would ultimately mind that much. At his age, with all those injuries, I can't imagine the idea of quarterbacking through a rebuild is all that enticing. One of Stafford's teammates, veteran wide receiver Allen Robinson, has also found himself in a rather delicate situation heading into the 2023 season. The former pro bowler was already showing some signs of decline during his last season in Chicago, but Los Angeles felt that, in their system, he could be a great addition as they chased a second consecutive Super Bowl title. And, needless to say, that bet did not pan out. Robinson played 10 games as he battled a slew of nagging injuries, and he did not look particularly good when he was out there. He accumulated just 339 yards and 3 touchdowns during that stretch, and frankly, just looked washed up. He is just 29 years old at this point, and he's under contract for a couple of more seasons. But with one more year like the last, the smart money says that LA finds a way to get rid of him. And I don't know how hot the Allen Robinson market will be at this point. If Robinson is serious about playing into his 30s, he needs to put up a significantly better 2023 season. Robinson isn't the only wide receiver that's currently in danger of falling out of the league. Think about someone like Saints wideout Michael Thomas. That is, if you still remember who Michael Thomas even is. Because frankly, my man has been missing in action for what feels like forever at this point, and we are slowly but surely reaching a breaking point. Something that I would have been hard pressed to believe just a few short years ago, when Thomas was widely considered to be one of the top receivers in the game. Back in 2019, Thomas led the league in receptions and yards, putting up a whopping 149 and 1,725 respectively, not to mention the nine touchdowns he hauled in. This was in year one of his five-year $100 million extension, so at the time, New Orleans was probably feeling pretty good about their investment. Unfortunately, in the time since, it has been a disaster for the man now colloquially known, particularly on the internet, as Slant Boy. Thomas has had a litany of issues, some behavioral and, in fairness, many injury-related, not to mention turn over at the quarterback position. And of course, the departure of his head coach, Sean Payton, who many considered to be one of the top offensive minds in the NFL. But even with all of that considered, his drop in production has been staggering. He's played just 10 games over the past three seasons, and when he was out there, well, he hardly looked like the superstar the Saints thought they had when they locked him down long term. Now that he's in the final year of his deal, it is prove it time for Thomas. He absolutely needs to show that he can still play or his days as an NFL player may come to an unceremonious end. This is not too dissimilar to Odell Beckham Jr., who, after a strong performance down the stretch run for the Super Bowl winning Rams in 2021, has found himself in an all too familiar position, missing action due to injury. And in true Odell fashion, his time away from the field has been, well, eventful. He had his incident on that American Airlines flight from Miami to LA, and that bizarre free agency tour in the second half of the 2022 season, which ultimately resulted in a whole lot of nothing. In all likelihood, OBJ will find himself on a roster this season. He has too much natural talent for a team not to roll the dice on him. But don't be surprised if it goes south and south fast. And before you know it, NFL GMs will have decided that these days, the former All-Pro is more trouble than he's worth. Closing out our wide receiver segment of the program, we have Julio Jones. Last year with the Bucks, Jones looked just about as over the hill as one can look. And if that was basically the third straight year of that for the now 34-year-old receiver. His production has dropped each year since his epic 2018 season, and it really fell off a cliff in 2020, his last year in Atlanta. And, well, it's just continued 
continued to spiral ever since. At this point, Jones may be hard pressed to even find a spot on a roster this season. And if he does, this will likely be his last chance to prove that there is still some of that special talent that we grew accustomed to seeing. Pretty much the second that he stepped onto an NFL field out of the University of Alabama. It's rare to see wide receivers age gracefully, but with his stature and athleticism, Jones seems like he could be a potential outlier, especially because he has been so consistent throughout his career. But as far as I'm concerned, it looks like it may be closing time for Julio, unless he can piece together a miracle revival in 2023. Next up, we have Raiders defensive end Chandler Jones. While elite pass rushers seem to have a knack for sticking around long after their prime, it certainly looked like the 11-year NFL vet might not fit that archetype. Much was made about the deal at Las Vegas made him back in March of 2022, as he was supposed to be part of an exciting new look Raiders team under Josh McDaniels. But this season was a massive disappointment, both for the team as a whole and for Jones. Despite playing across from Max Crosby, one of the best pass rushers in the game, Jones was only able to amass 4.5 sacks, less than half of his total from the year before. To Jones's credit, he is a freak athlete even amongst a league filled with them, but he didn't look the same in 2022. And without a good performance next season, the Raiders may look to part ways with him, and it is highly possible that there won't be much of a market for the aging D-end. Last but not least, we have Tyron Smith, who after being a staple on the Cowboys offensive line over the last decade plus, looks to be firmly in the crosshairs of father time. Smith has played a total of just 17 games during the last three seasons, and even when he has been out there, he really has not looked great. He played through a ton of nagging injuries during his career, which at 6 foot 5 inches and over 320 pounds is no small feat, and unfortunately, this seems to have taken a significant toll on his mobility. Smith can hardly move out there these days. Jerry may be holding out hope that a full offseason to recuperate after playing just four games last year might be just what the doctor ordered for Smith, but if he can't turn it around in 2023, then that may be all she wrote. But which NFL star do you think needs a stellar 2023 season to save their career the most? Was there anyone that we missed? Let us know in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.